So I'm very happy to invite Professor Kannan. Uh, welcome, Kannan. Kannan is the co-principal investigator of this project, but more importantly, he is the coordinator of all national mission projects that are happening in IIT Bombay. Uh, he is the one who had a great contribution in the Akash project, which we just successfully concluded. He has been with us right from the day when we first made a presentation to MHRD in 2008 on the teacher training program. And he runs two very, very important projects independently. One is called Spoken Tutorials and the other is called FOSI. I will not steal his thunder. Professor Kannan to share his thoughts with you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thanks, Professor Fatak, for the introduction. So I would like to, uh, uh, first of all, extend a, I don't know whether I should say warm welcome, but welcome you anyway. We are a warm country. We are a hot country. We rather like uh, cooler climates, right? I'm really happy that uh, we are doing this course with uh, uh, Professor Deepan Ghosh and uh, Professor Shiv Prasad. I just want to begin with uh, uh, some interactions uh, we have had with them. The current chairman of AACTE, when he was the, uh, as the uh, director, College of Engineering, Pune, he uh, requested me, I think it was 2007 or 2008, uh, I was the head of distance education program, uh, CDEP, Center for Distance Engineering Education Program. And uh, he wanted to receive uh, our courses live. And uh, uh, one of the courses was uh, physics. And Professor Deepan Ghosh agreed to transmit it live. OK? And uh, it's interesting because he was teaching it in, um, in a classroom. And he wanted to use that, transmit from there itself, directly. And then he told me, that uh, the computer there didn't have um, a PDF reader. There was a computer, but it had no PDF reader. So of course, we tried to fix it and so on. Then I asked uh, Professor Ghosh, you have been teaching this course more than once. How come you are noticing it only now? So his answer was, that was an interactive class, and I would draw it. Do you expect me to draw this when this is being transmitted live and so many people are watching? Should I waste the time? I would rather show it. I would draw it, draw it ahead of time, use it because the time is very valuable. So I wanted to give this example to show that, that the method of teaching is not the same when you do it in a class or when you use ICT method, right? So he was geared up for this in 2007, 2008 itself. No wonder his course is considered one of the best courses uh, in the campus. And no wonder people fondly recall his course. So I'm really delighted that Professor Ghosh will be teaching this course. I have had a lot of interactions with uh, Professor Shiprasad too. Um, Professor Fatek talked about the project that I am leading called FOSI, Free and Open Source Software for Education. Professor Shiva Prasad was uh, also the director of uh, CIFIPRA, which is the uh, joint activity between Indian and uh, French governments um, to promote joint research. Now, um, uh, he encouraged me to visit France and uh, write a joint proposal to promote Scilab. Scilab is, uh, how many of you have heard of Scilab? OK, quite a few. Thank you. So Scilab is an uh, outstanding alternative, open source software um, alternative to MATLAB. And um, by the way, it works on this machine, about which I'm going to talk about. This is the, what we call this $100 machine. Um, it's an open source software. It also, we also got it working on, uh, on uh, Akash, which was the 2,300 rupee machine. So open source software, it's available. It, you can make it available everywhere. So you can um, do all kinds of things. 
Um, I'll see if I can give a demo of it a little later. So uh, thanks to Professor uh, Shiva Prasad's uh, encouragement, I wrote a proposal, got the money, got the um, scientists, because Scilab is written by French scientists. It was originally uh, developed at INRIA and uh, their defense research agency uh, of France. And so uh, that's how this uh, got started. I am really happy to say that uh, we have done a lot of work in Scilab, thanks to that encouragement. Okay. Um, so with that uh, uh, icebreaker, I thought I would start my uh, brief uh, talk. Uh, I will talk till about 10:30. Uh, then I will uh, invite uh, 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 Professor Ghosh, uh, Professor Shiva Prasad, and Professor Tomi. To uh, Professor Tomi is the he will uh, introduce the physics department and what the activities are and so on. So this, uh, let me give a brief overview of uh, this, uh, the agency that funds this activity, T10KT, train uh, 10,000 teachers. You might know uh, that once it was called uh, teach 1,000, train 1,000 teachers. It used to be a 1,000 teacher training program and uh, because of its su success, it got upgraded into 10,000. So this is funded by the National Mission on Education through ICT, or um, abbreviated as NMEICT. Uh, it's an initiative of MHRD, Government of India. It has uh, three main activities. One is um, um, establishing bandwidth. Second one is creating content. By the way, this is uh, this T10KT is supported by the content part. The third one is devices. So Akash came out of that, and a part of it, a small money was spent in coming up with this device. I'll talk about this device a little later. Um, it started with about uh, 4,612 crore, uh, on February 9th, 2009, one might wonder why 4,612 crore, it's an odd number. A dollar was trading at 46 rupees, 12 paisa at that time. It was supposed to be a $1 billion project. And that's how this money, that's how this project started. Now we are in the second phase of the same mission. 60% of the money was spent in creating bandwidth. The idea was to give one GBPS bandwidth to every one of the 400 universities that existed at the time of writing that proposal. Now there are, I think, about 700, 800 universities. But then NKN came, it added money. So the idea was that all universities could be covered. Um, by various means, uh, the many universities got one GBPS bandwidth at a cost of about 1% of the prevailing rates, whenever we uh, came up with the figures. So it's an amazing uh, initiative. And then um, every, you know, every affiliating college was also given uh, bandwidth out of that one GBPS. So that was the first activity of the mission. The second activity is the content creation. Now, content creation uh, has supported many of these um, NPTEL is, a, is a, one of the most well-known uh, projects supported by the mission. So I will not talk about it. You will already know about it. T10KT is uh, one from IIT Bombay. Uh, you are experiencing it, so I will not talk about it. We have a project at IIT Bombay called eKalpa, that is to teach design courses um, for people who want to learn design. That is being done by Professor Ravi Puvaya uh, at IIT Bombay, jointly with uh, NID Bangalore and also University uh, IIT Gohati. We have a project called e -Antra. It is being done by my colleague, uh, Professor uh, Kavi Arya in computer science. And uh, through that, he has been establishing robotics labs across the country and teaching uh, embedded systems through that activity. 
project, now I'll talk about the, uh, okay, you might have also heard of Virtual Labs project that is being done by, uh, coordinated by IIT Delhi. Uh, Professor Ranjan Bose is the coordinator of that for the whole country. And we have got uh, labs available. If I'm not mistaken, there are also physics labs. Through that, people can access these experiments remotely and use them as a part of your regular lab. It's available for the whole country. Um, and then we have a pedagogy project. It is um, coordinated by Professor A.K. Ray of IIT Karakpur. Of course, now he has retired. It is being done by um, uh, his colleagues at IIT Karakpur. And that talks about um, coming up with uh, looking at the pedagogy and outcome-based learning. That is, if in a course you have to guarantee some output, what should be in that course? How should that course be designed? So that is being done by Professor, uh, coordinated by Professor Ray and his uh, uh, colleagues, and it is also a multi-institutional project. Let me talk briefly about uh, the projects that uh, I uh, uh, coordinate at IIT Bombay. Uh, one of them is uh, the FOSSE project, um, free and open source software for education. And uh, the other project is uh, Spoken Tutorial. By the way, Spoken Tutorial and T10KT are together. In fact, this is, uh, you, might have, you, you might even come across a term like talk to a teacher. So talk to a teacher project is the name that ministry knows us by. That's how the ministry gives funding. T10KT is one part of it. Spoken Tutorial is another part. Another interesting uh, smaller part of it is known as uh, Ask a Question that we have been doing quite some time. How many of you have heard of this Ask a Question here? Anyone knows about it? OK. So uh, Ask a Question is a program by which, through which uh, IIT faculty has been answering questions that students may have live uh, one hour a week. It happens, uh, we started with uh, electrical engineering and then we did this for several years. If I'm not mistaken, we have, um, we started in, uh, I think 2010. We have already done, let me see, 200 uh, weekly sessions. Um, and of course we didn't, uh, there were times when uh, we could not contact them. So I would say it has been going on for about five, five years. For five years, E faculty has answered questions um, live uh, through this same medium, uh, a, a view. Now, um, about a year ago, uh, physics uh, faculty also joined. Uh, they have been answering questions. In fact, I would like to uh, mention this to you. We can uh, provide the details of this, where it is done and so on. In fact, if this Friday, if it is done, we can, uh, if you are going to be here, we would like you to see that, visit that uh, place where it is done and uh, see uh, how um, uh, the student questions are handled. In fact, this is a, uh, this is a great uh, methodology because it allows experts, all, experts from other colleges also to start answering student questions. We have not reached that, but it is capable of expanding bringing in experts from across the country to pull in and answer questions. And um, ask a question is very important because uh, when a student posts, uh, typically good students, when they appear for competitive exams, uh, have difficulty with a very small portion, let's say about 5%. They generally know about 95%, but they don't know that 5%. And questions are asked, unfortunately, in that 5 question, in that 5%. So what do the students do? They don't get any help from the local uh, college. They go and join in the coaching class. So they spend a lot of money, spend a lot of time. Why they spend a lot of time? Because the coaching class doesn't know which 5% these students don't know. So the coaching class teaches the entire 100%. So they end up learning the 95% and also this 5%. So we thought that if it, in this ask a question, we could actually focus on that 5%. Okay, the students don't have to waste time. And not only that, the questions can be uh, answered by competent authority. Okay, unlike a coaching class where you don't know, or unlike a Yahoo forum, you don't know who answers, 
whether the answers are reliable. Okay. So I would like to uh, mention that it's an important activity that we have started. I would like you to uh, participate in that. Uh, maybe Mukta, you can make a note of this and include this in the program. Um, about uh, this, uh, by the way, I wanted to talk about this. This is the uh, device. Uh, I call it a $100 device. Um, we actually got it at uh, 5,820, but then we got it as a research uh, uh, project, which means that we had some uh, um, customs and excise uh, uh, exemptions. Also, we bought it about a year ago, so the dollar was a uh, lot cheaper at the time. So I would say the, today the cost may be about, about 7,500, but still it is, uh, it's a great device. I'm going to demonstrate this to you. Um, this came as a continuation of the Akash project. And uh, uh, Akash was a tablet, but we wanted a complete keyboard. You can see the keyboard. It's a complete device. It is a very lightweight. I can carry it very easily. Uh, it's about 800 grams. It has a lot of uh, external connections. We have even connected like two terabyte hard disk th to this and uh, works beautifully. I have already validated its connection. So let me just connect this here. So this uh, uh, device has uh, three distinguishing features about it. The first one is um, it has a, it's a very good build at a, an affordable cost, number one. Um, and if you are interested in going through this, uh, we'll make it available. I'll ask my staff members to make, bring a few. You can experiment with that. Uh, it uh, second one is uh, by the way the battery lasts anywhere from four to eight hours depending on whether you use internet whether you stream YouTube video through Wi-Fi and things like that. By the way, Wi-Fi is connected. You can see here. You can see this here, right? The second feature of this is it comes with an excellent collection of software. A lot of nice things are there. Uh, what I want to do is. Um, uh, because uh, because uh, this is a good enough device, our uh, CS101 faculty decided to um, use this as a part of their course. In the last semester, there were um, about 55 students who didn't have a computer of their own. CS101 is a programming course. It's a compulsory course for all of our students, right? And um, long time ago, our, uh, we made a decision at IIT Bombay that the computer center will not house um, the central computers. They will be distributed to the hostels. So the uh, computers are given to the hostels. And now I hear that the computer secretaries in the hostels don't want to maintain their computers. It's a lot of headache. So, in fact, it took a long time. In fact, only this semester, we didn't realize last semester also. In this semester, we found that the uh, current computer uh, CS101 instructor, Professor Vashab, they told the students don't have computers anywhere. There are about, this year, there, this semester, there are about 90 students without a computer. And, uh, you know, you'd be surprised in a place like IIT, that 90 students don't have a computer and they have to do a programming course. And there is no uh, computer easily accessible. And um, uh, so she said that nowadays many of the courses, whether it is PH101, CH101, Physics101, Chemistry101, and so on and so forth, they all give their um, uh, content through PDF files and say, you know, do this. And they send emails. And uh, apparently one, uh, she apparently scolded the students. One student apparently pulled out a smartphone smaller than this, said he actually could not see it well in this smartphone. Should he buy a bigger smartphone? Okay, that's when she realized the problem. Okay, so if this is the case in IIT, you can imagine how it is in other places. Okay, so we decided to, uh, uh, we gave 50 computers, last uh, 50 computers on loan at the end of the semester, they returned it. This semester, 
about 90 students have come forward and they wanted. In fact, we did a, uh, let me see if I can show that. We did a, a survey of the students. So here is their age profile. You can see they are mostly around 18. There are some on 17 also, uh, 19, 17, 19. This is the medium of instruction. Uh, first is in, uh, English, the second is Hindi, third is other languages. Medium of instruction in their school. Mother's uh, education, this is I think below 10th, uh, below 12th, you can see 10th, uh, 10th and 12th, um, uh, I think this is bachelor's degree, bachelor's. So this is, uh, this is below 10th, this is 10th, this is 12th. Quite a few uh, people, mothers, uh, have not studied. This is the same thing, father's education. Some of them are uh, graduates. This is the family income. This is uh, below 2 lakhs. You can see more than 60% of them, uh, they come from families below, whose income is below 2 lakhs. Okay? This is for about um, 47 uh, people who answered this survey. Okay, This year's survey. Right? This semester survey, we have given it to about 90 students. Okay? So there are other things uh, uh, for what purpose you will use this and so on. So I don't have to, uh, this is the JE rank. Quite a few people are, I think their ranks are 1000 and above. And all kinds of things, we have collected an excellent survey and the students are very keen to do this. So my hypothesis is that if these students didn't have a computer, they would not have, supposing a student in a hostel without a computer at 10 o'clock in the night gets an idea, bright idea, it will take only five minutes to test it, okay? At IIT, we may give permission. Our labs may be open uh, in the evenings also, but of course, night, night time we will close. Uh, assuming that the student has key permission, he will go all the way from the hostel to the lab, open it, try it out, Come back, it will take one hour to test a 10 minute idea. If it is raining, it will take more time. I strongly believe that these five minute ideas never get tested because of this. You can imagine what happens in uh, colleges where uh, there are day scholars and the college bus leaves at five o'clock, okay? And they don't have computers at home. So look at the situation in IIT. So how is it the students, my hypothesis is the students don't get time to study, to use computers and um, they mug up because they have to pass the CS101 course. They have to pass the, um, the exam. They mug up and that is why they don't get jobs. So I believe that if you want to make a digital India, Okay, we have a great opportunity. Give computers to our children. Give computers to, at least on loan, during CS101. So that can be used by PH101, because you will write emails, you will upload PDF documents, they will open it. They will study at home. Okay. So, uh, so this was seen as something very nice. In fact, I gave it to Professor Varsha Apte. She immediately downloaded uh, C programming called simple CPP. It comes with graphics and all that. She configured uh, and then uh, uh, she used the make file, configured, it worked beautifully. She said, yeah, this is great. 90 students have come forward. So the second thing, first I was talking about the, started with three good aspects of this uh, computer. One is a great build. Second one is, uh, it comes with a good collection of software. I told you it runs uh, Scilab. Let me just uh, see if I can show some content that we have created through our uh, 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 spoken tutorial project. So um, we have spoken tutorials on uh, simple hardware called XPice. XPice is a, uh, a device to do physics experiments. It comes with about 50 experiments. So we have created a spoken tutorial that explains people, students, how they can learn uh, these 50 experiments. 
one of the experiments is it comes with a magnet and a coil you can actually drive current through the coil make the magnet rotate and pick up that by varying the current uh, you can actually change the frequency of oscillation and things like that and you can say that this is how alternating current is generated now uh, how many of you have heard of spoken tutorials anyone has heard of it okay only one or two so this is available on our website by the way this is i'm connecting through our uh, through wifi okay it's available on the you can see the uh, url spoken hyphen tutorial.org let me just play this by the device online open firefox web browser in the address bar type http colon slash slash advance it a little bit more install on ubuntu linux os we can install the software directly from okay maybe i'll go to the next one so that is junior icon appears click on it to open the interface there it is let us install the software on netbook express junior software can be installed on netbook using l ubuntu software center right click on software center so it explains how to do that and and so okay. on so let me see if i can apps basket window open so i thought through this we can also display uh explain this uh, spoken tutorial here let me just show this discuss about the channels on the top panel of the device on the top panel each terminal is assigned to a specific channel number for example channel 1 is assigned to a1 and channel 2 to a2 i will show how to connect wires to the device device has screw terminals on either side to make the connection we insert wires into the terminals and tighten the screws here a2 is connected to sin this is the circuit diagram let us perform an experiment to measure the voltage of a2 and show its sine wave let us see the result on the plot window on the plot window click of course uh, this may not be directly relevant to uh, students at the college level but it will be uh, highly useful extremely useful at the school level 11th and 12th and so on i wanted to uh, show the other one uh, i wanted to show this physics uh, chemistry modify display or view ke spoken tutorial mein aapka swagat hai this is in hindi is tutorial mein hum nimn karna sikhenge screen par model ko rotate zoom move aur spin karna view ko sanshodhit karna डिस्प्ले का साइज उसका कलर और साइज बदलना इमेज को एक्सीज और बाउंड बॉक्स के साथ दर्शाना इमेज को अनेक फाइल फॉर्मेट में सेव करना इस ट्यूटोरियल के अनुसरण के लिए आपको निम्न के साथ परिचित होना चाहिए जेमोल एप्लीकेशन विंडो और मॉडल किट फंक्शन प्रयोग करके मॉडल खोली है स्ट्रक्चर के बेहतर दृश्य के लिए हम मॉडल को रोटेट और जूम कर सकते हैं so uh, i wanted to take this opportunity to talk about our spoken tutorial project which creates tutorials for self learning it's available in uh, chemistry physics and so on of course our main emphasis is on it okay okay so i think i have uh, so here is another tutorial that talks about piloted at iit bombay in this tutorial we will learn about the desktop of the fossi netbook some of the programs that it comes with okay uh i also wanted to show you let me just turn off this uh, let me disconnect this wifi we also make this useful for students who don't have access to internet okay because many students don't have access to internet and um, it's difficult to ask them to uh i mean difficult to provide internet in every computer colleges may have computers uh, internet connection good connection but may not be available in every machine so we came up with an offline mechanism uh let me just show you this uh we have uh, wikipedia available for uh, offline use 
so it has about uh, five lakh articles. In fact, you will see the number in Hindi, about one lakh articles, and it takes only, can you see this? Okay, 700 MB. Uh, it has uh, about one lakh articles. Uh, so it is a veritable library. And it is, uh, by the way, I turned off this uh, Wi-Fi, right? It is running from SD card. And then you can see that this is the Hindi Wikipedia. And it's a self-contained because one lakh articles are there. So you can say, so let's see Kailash, there it is. So it's a self-contained, so it has together, it is possible to load it in different languages. Um, and then, one last thing, we have, it is also possible to create uh, spoken tutorials uh, offline, for offline use. Now we can see that it comes from file here, if you can see this in the top URL, right? Welcome to the spoken tutorial that explains the side-by-side -side method. I am Kannan Moggalya. Okay. In this tutorial, we will learn the following. We will learn what is meant by the side-by-side Let me side stop method. it. So that is the third feature of this machine that you can actually conduct training using this, using spoken tutorials. Students can use spoken tutorials, use a headphone. You can see that uh, although it is a low cost machine, it uh, quality is very good. Whatever you do, in fact, I gave a talk recently about Digital India in uh, Nehru Science Center in Mumbai. It was in a 250 uh, capacity, audio, uh, capacity uh, room. And there were 400 children, 11th and 12th children. They were sitting all over the place, on the stage, everywhere. And I used this machine to give the talk. And it came out very well. So uh, this is something that you may want to take back, because your college may have the same problem. Your students may not have access to this. Only thing is, it is not available single unit. Many of you will come and say, where can I buy? It is not available. Why it is not available? You buy a single unit, and something goes wrong. Uh, key K stops working, or camera stops working, who will repair it? Where will you send it? The, the model that we have chosen is that it is available only for bulk purchase. The college says that I want to give it to my students. So let's say about 100 students want to buy it, and another 100 students want to be given on loan, and my class three, class four employees may want to take it for their homes, and some faculty members also want to have for their children, okay? Then it is possible to set up such a center and support service through that center. So it is available only for bulk purchase. If you are interested, I can give you the uh, phone number uh, of this uh, uh, vendor, but it is not available for single use. You will come and, some of you will come and say, I want to buy one, I want to buy for my maid servant, and so on and so forth, they, although the intention is good, it cannot be supported at this price, okay? So it's available for institutional purchase, and I suggest that you consider telling your management, set up such a thing, make it available to your students through that. So with that, I think uh, uh, I, have, uh, I have well exceeded my time. I, um, I want to thank uh, the organizers for giving me this opportunity. I would like to invite uh, Professor Tomi in fact, Professor Tommy um, uh, has been um, a good supporter of uh, uh, this Ask a Question uh, series, and uh, I'm going to hand over the mic to Professor Tommy. Okay, uh, I am here standing as the head physics department IIT Bombay, and uh, even though you have been all welcomed by IIT as well as the organizers, let me welcome you on behalf of physics department because this program is now conducted for physics. And I see so many physics faculty from various engineering colleges. I'm happy that you could reach here and get some information, additional information about the course as well as the subject, uh, which you will be able to take back, which you will be also be imparting on other, other groups which will be looking uh, at you. In IIT Bombay, not only IIT Bombay, most of the IITs, the department, for example, most of you will be in a college, engineering college, where the department size may be, maybe two, three, I don't know how much is this. Because I have seen that most of the engineering colleges as a physics, maybe two faculty, three faculty, because it is just used as a service department. 
whereas in iit iits at least in iit bombay or even in other iits each department is an independent department for example physics here we have almost 40 faculty so you can see that when it is as uh, maybe big as strong as any other engineering departments so we have the full freedom of developing the department into a self sufficient department or an independent department to do our own uh, our own work our own teaching as well as to impart the education to the engineering students as well as the science students so not only that you will have you surely uh, are going to have the uh, chance to interact with uh, two or three of our faculty in which uh, two faculties were already introduced they are the senior most faculty in physics department and uh, you will be lucky to have them uh, giving you the lectures also but you are also most welcome to come to physics department which is just if you have time as there is a time limitations are there but any time you can walk into physics department whether it is after this uh, your coursework because the department never closes okay for example uh, that is one thing in IITs you will see none of the department ever closes it is always open and there will be students throughout the time especially the PhD students it may not they may not be the undergraduate students uh, or graduate students but surely the PhD students will be there always in the in the department and as professor Kannan said most of the all the departments have computer centers means the for UG computing lab PG computing lab so these are the places where even the undergraduate students will be using so you can walk in any time and you can have a look at it and I say we have 40 faculty okay who are working in different areas of research also they are all capable of uh, uh, explaining any any doubts if you have other than what may be the ones which are teaching you but we are all working in different research areas also okay again I, what i'm saying is specific about uh, physics but it is not uh, containing to physics or only even if you move to chemistry science i'm just talking about science department yes of course engineering departments also give the same flavor for everything even if you walk to chemistry department it will be the same there may be some 40 to 50 faculty more than 200 research scholars another 200 undergraduate students so if you look at that when each department is like a college which you are coming from so what i will suggest is that make use of your stay here okay whatever way you can uh, get more information more interaction even talk with the different faculty from different departments make use of that one and again sometimes you may be thinking why should i listen to talks uh, which some senior faculty is giving in physics and things like that I'll say that one, uh, just giving an example, because see, uh, four years back we had a chance to teach in a center school, because we have a center school here, so there were no teachers there, physics and math, so they asked uh, physics department whether we can teach the students until the teachers come. So three of us went again to teach, uh, three or four of us, in which again Professor Deepan Ghosh was there, I was there, and uh, Professor Suresh who is going to teach you also there. So we had they had done earlier for me it was the first time teaching in a school that also 12 standard 11 standard kids and it was a nice experience so after that actually they uh, called me because we have a, a training center for the center school just down here in Kanjurmar and they have uh, constant training for the teachers so once they told me that there is a teacher training this week is there can you come and give uh, lectures and they gave me three topics okay to give one hour one hour lectures and i was first thinking that oh anyway they are teachers why, what is there to teach them anyway it is uh, again it is a 12 standard they gave me the 12 standard textbook and say that these are the three chapters you have to just give them introduction and uh, teach them for one hour i was even little bit hesitant to teach what what do you teach the teachers so i went and i had three topics so one was uh, a semiconductor and other was uh, electricity and the third one was uh, on light so i asked them which one you want to start with because i can teach all the three anyway it is alternate with three they said okay start with semiconductors so by the time i finished semiconductors it was three and a half hours which was supposed to be one hour and i found that there was something like uh, 90 teachers were there they were asking all type of questions and whether I was successful in explaining or something like that, but at the end of the day, if they have learned something which they can now teach their students in a little bit better way, 
I think that is the real gain you are going to get out of that one. And again, I am saying that you are lucky to have uh, at least the two senior most, even the third person who is teaching you also well experienced. Lucky to have two teachers who are actually the uh, uh, have got excellence in teaching award. They have been teaching for so many years. So rather than learning something which you already know, I I will suggest that you should uh, take this opportunity to clear your doubts with them. Okay, and uh, be sh because once you clear your doubts, if you are confident, I'm sure that you can teach better. And if you teach better, of course, the t uh, students will be interested and they will be asking you more questions. The moment they ask more questions, you have to go and prepare and again, you will be up to date. So that is one thing you should be able to uh, achieve during this time. And I'm sure that you will be able to go back to your colleges after gaining something and again once again i welcome you all to physics department whenever you want you can come during this time and even if you as i said if you want to talk to some faculty we can make all the arrangements for you to uh, come to the department you can see the research labs also we have various research labs as well as any other any other facilities which you may like to have during your stay there you are most welcome to come to physics department thank you